Hi, I'm Anais Salas. And I'm Janice Zasueta, and this is our Simi 2014 video. Have you ever watched one of those crazy movies that has some crazy epidemic going on and it turns the world into chaos and no cure can be found? Such as Contagion, which is about a virus that takes months to develop a cure, but within those months the death toll rises exponentially. Or like World War Z in which Brad Pitt is the hero in a world infected by a virus that turns people into zombies and the casualties reach more than 4 billion. Or in the infamous Spanish movie, Wreck, where a group of people are quarantined in an apartment complex to contain a dangerous infection, and a SWAT team is called in to rescue any survivors, but does not go as expected. We see this as something so out of our reach, something that won't ever happen in our lifetime, when in reality, it's happening right in front of us. So what's happening? Antibiotic resistance. But what is it? First of all, what are antibiotics? Antibiotics are a type of medication that slow or destroy the growth of bacteria. What is antibiotic resistance? Antibiotic resistance is when a bacteria develops a gene that has it be resistant to any type of antibiotics. But how have we managed to develop antibiotic resistance exactly? There are many ways you can acquire antibiotic resistance. One way you can acquire antibiotic resistance is if you do not finish your prescriptions. For example, let's say that one day a bad bacteria enters your body. It immediately begins to multiply and spread throughout your whole body. You then begin to feel sick and develop a bacterial infection. So you go to the doctors and get antibiotics prescribed. So now let's say you finished all your medication. Now all the bad bacteria will have died. But life isn't always so nice. So let's say you did not finish your prescription. So what happened now is that after being exposed to antibiotics, a couple of bad bacteria will have not died and will have developed a resistant gene. They then multiply and spread throughout you. You develop another infection, so you go to the doctors to get antibiotics prescribed once again. This time, the bad bacteria won't be so easy to treat because it is resistant. You either won't be able to kill it or the doctor will have to find alternative methods to treat you. So you might be wondering what happens within a bacteria that has antibiotic resistance. We will talk about three mechanisms a bacterium uses to resist antibiotics. The first method is the efflux pump. So what happens is that the antibiotics enter the bacterium and then just simply go through the pump and the pump sends the antibiotics back out. This is the mechanism of resistance to tetracycline. The second method, a specific type of enzyme chemically modifies the antibiotics so that it loses its purpose and no longer binds to receptors and blocks any protein. This is the mechanism of resistance to streptomycin. The third method, a type of enzyme is produced that breaks down antibiotics. These enzymes are better known as beta-lactamase that cleaves penicillin. If the already listed ways of developing antibiotic resistance isn't enough for you to be interested in this topic, listen to some real-life cases. More than 2 million people in the U.S. get drug-resistant infections annually. About 23,000 die from these diseases that are becoming increasingly resistant to antibiotics. In 2011, there was an outbreak at the NIH clinic. It started with patient zero who was carrying a highly resistant superbug known as KPC. When the infection spread to another patient that had no link to patient zero, the hospital started being more cautious. The hospitals hadn't dealt with KPC before it and thought they had controlled it while quarantining the infected patients and taking extra safety measures and making sure everybody had proper safety wear. However, patients that were being admitted were beginning to get infected and no combination of an antibiotics was able to halt the infection. Ultimately, 11 patients were infected and died before the containment of KPC. Several tests were done in order to see how KPC managed to spread so rapidly. Most of the patients had some sort of overlap where they shared a ward, but many of the patients had no overlap and KPC had to have traveled in a much more complicated manner. These cases seem so far out of reach seeing as they have not happened in your town or something. However, it has actually occurred already. A couple of years ago, a small girl was admitted with lung issues to at UMAC and had eventually developed an infection here. The pediatric infectious disease specialist, Dr. Sean Elliott, talks about what had happened in the patient Addie's case. So yes, even in Tucson, and two years ago, we had our own experience with a multi-drug resistant infection. This was the case of Addie. Ultimately, she had to go on a lung and heart bypass machine called ECMO, which completely takes the blood out of the body and circulates it and puts it back in. And that was the only way we could keep her alive while we tried to treat the infection. 
that should have been survivable. That should have been okay in terms of risk to her health. However, she then developed a second infection related to being in the hospital on all of this advanced life support. And that infection was called stenotrophomonas. It's a bacteria which loves moist, warm areas like her breathing tube. And once that infection took root in her lungs, which were already very, very sick from the MRSA, there was no turning back. We had to treat it with more powerful and aggressive antibiotics. And each time I treated with an antibiotic, the stenotrophomonas became even more resistant. So ultimately, we got to the point, three months into this bypass machine, where there were no other drugs available to treat this stenotrophomonas. The one exception was an old, old, old drug called colistin. We used this drug. It was successful. She was able to get new lungs, and she is now a healthy, happy, active, spunky teenager uh, who's doing really quite well. How did we get this deep into a mess that was so preventable? We have misused and overused antibiotics. Certain doctors misuse antibiotics when they prescribe patients a prescription just because a patient is being persistent. Some doctors have prescribed unnecessary high doses of antibiotics just to be sure the infection goes away, but this helps bacteria develop the resistance gene. There are certain ideas that have been suggested as possible solutions for antibiotic resistance, such as quorum sensing. Quorum sensing is a stimulus in response to population density. Single cell organisms like bacteria use this by gene expression to communicate to one another. Bacteria basically can talk to each other. The mechanism works like this. Bacterial cells have a signal producing protein that makes an enzyme which creates a hormone molecule, which is the red triangle. As the cells grow, they release the molecules into their environments. The bacteria also have a receptor that fits in the molecule on their cell surface. So when the number of molecules increases, which says something about the amount of cells around, it locks down into a cell and tells it to activate whatever behavior the cell does. If researchers manage to control this by different chemical reactions disrupting the bacteria's gene expression, it might be able to slow down a bacterial infection or even turn off the resistant gene. Different ways that scientists can interrupt the bacteria's communication include disrupting the intraspecies communication and or the interspecies communication. The intraspecies strategy makes molecules that look like the real deal, but will actually jam receptors in the cell, thus the cells will not be able to activate their behavior. This strategy would be species-specific anti-quorum sensing molecules in use. Interspecies disruption is very similar, except that all of these cells have the same basic molecules running through their systems. Interspecies disruption could manipulate all bacteria's receptors, which would be a broad-spectrum treatment. This method could be the new antibiotics of, of its time. However, perfecting this and getting it into medical treatments would take years and be costly at first. We asked Dr. Elliot what other solutions were plausible, and these were his thoughts. There are a lot of possible approaches to the problem of multi-drug resistance and the very real threat that we will have bacteria which we are unable to treat. We could discover new drugs, we could create and develop new drugs if we could guarantee that they could be paid for. Clearly that's not going to be as handled by market forces. That's one possibility. Next possibility is to try and limit the spread of those resistant bacteria which are already here. And that means several things. We need to start using antibiotics that we have much more wisely, right? One way of doing that is antibiotic stewardship. And that means once we know that a patient has a specific infection, we can use our knowledge about that infection to then focus or, or make more consolidated the type of antibiotic we use. So rather than using what we call the big gun, meaning a great, big, very powerful antibiotic that kills everything, use a much more specific antibiotic for that known bacteria. Because if we don't, the selective pressure of that big gun, that broad spectrum antibiotic, allows more resistance to emerge and to develop. So, that sounds simple, right? It's a no-brainer. All you have to do is just make the right choice. Except that not every single doctor has the knowledge necessary to make that wise decision. And not every single doctor is willing to let some other doctor make that decision in the case. So it takes a lot of effort, and many times it's an administrative problem, a political problem. You have to empower a pharmacist and a consulting doctor to make that choice, and in a way, 
force the uh, attending doctor to accept those decisions. What else can we do? Well, as it turns out, the biggest culprit for drug resistance in bacteria is really not human health because the biggest consumer of antibiotics in the United States of America is not humans, it's animals and fish. So the use of antibiotics in agua or aqua culture and agriculture is about 80% of the use of antibiotics in our, our country. So there are very few enforceable laws to limit the use of antibiotics in animal feed, for example. And yet, that's been shown to be a clear source of development of resistance. Quorum sensing and growing the business for antibiotic research are all good solutions, but the solutions are happening at a much slower pace, allowing bacterial infections to get to you and your loved ones faster. It seems that this superbug won't get to you if it hasn't already. It sounds like something you would see in a big blockbuster with Brad Pitt being casted in it. Unfortunately, that is false. This is an epidemic that is happening right in front of us that will eventually wipe us out if we are not more careful and don't become more serious about developing a larger market for antibiotics. We even asked Dr. Elliot what his thought on the dilemma was. This is a big problem that we're dealing with. Antibiotic overuse, multidrug resistant bacteria is not something which happens to somebody else. It happens here. Uh, I've lost track of the number of cases that I've had to treat personally uh, with resistant bacteria due to overuse of antibiotics. Some was controllable, some was not controllable. So what does this mean? This means that none of us, you, me, the people in this room, nobody can ignore this problem as being not likely to affect us because that's false. The dilemma is clear as light. Let us not return to the pre-antibiotic era where small cuts, grapes, or strep throats could result in a life-threatening situation. The time is now. Are you aware? Thank you. How far are we from corn sensing manipulation? What needs to happen in order for pharmaceutical companies to give more importance to the antibiotic market? Currently, what are the precautions doctors are taking when prescribing antibiotics?